Hello everyone, this is Emily with Simple Booth. I'm here to walk you through the web dashboard for the new Light software plan. So here's the dashboard. You will access this through our website and then log in with your Simple Booth account credentials. So you'll see any recently uploaded photos here, any recently updated galleries, and then your newest uploads. You'll get some quick totals over here. So total photos uploaded, photos this month and total galleries. You have your account management section here. So if you click on your username, this drop down menu will appear. You have a link here to manage your account and then a link to licenses and billing. If you click on manage account, you can update your account details here, including changing your password. We have a public profile feature that allows you to display any public galleries with 15 photos or more. So you can add in customizations here or disable this, whatever you prefer. Here's what my public profile looks like currently. You can promote this on your website with using this HTML code. If I click on billing, this is where I can confirm the plan that I'm on and when that expires. We have a payment methods page where you can add a card on file and then an invoices page where if you subscribed through our website, your invoices will show up here and you can download them to a PDF. All right, let's hop into presets. So for every event, you'll want to create a preset and a gallery. A preset is where you can customize the user experience at the booth and what the photos will look like. And the gallery is where those photos will live and where people can share from. So let's create a new one. So your preset name is not publicly visible. Typically it will be your event name. This is what you'll be choosing when you launch the app on the iPad. For capture type, on this plan, you can only create a preset for the iPad in the app. If you need to create a virtual preset, you would need to upgrade. All right, so now we're gonna create the basic settings for our gallery. The gallery name is publicly visible, so folks will be able to see this as they're viewing their photos from the booth. And then the gallery name and any hashtags that you include will be embedded on Facebook and Twitter posts automatically. There are three different privacy levels for the galleries. With public, anyone can see the gallery and it may be listed on public pages. There will also be a gallery opt-in screen that pops up. With unlisted, the gallery is not listed on public pages and only people with a link to the gallery can view it. That gallery opt-in screen is still gonna pop up here as well. And then with private, only the owner of the gallery can view it when signed in. So all photos will be automatically marked as private so that gallery opt-in screen will not be included. Let's go with public and hit create. So after we create the basic settings of the gallery, it throws us right back into the preset so that we can finish customizing the user experience at the booth and the photos, of course. So we have a touchless interaction option that you can turn on. Keep in mind that some features are unavailable if you decide to use this. For the photo design, we have our design guide linked at the bottom of this section. I do recommend having this open in another tab as you're going through because it will provide sizing requirements for logos, overlays and margins, backgrounds, and then other options as well. So the first thing you get to choose in the photo design section is your image type. So we have live GIF, GIF, rebound, single, two by two, one and two, and then photo strips. With live GIF, GIF, rebound, and single, you can allow participants to choose between those four options. You're not able to add in other options to that choose layout feature, so it would be those four. Here you can choose the crop, so you can do no crop. Right now the preview area is in portrait. You can switch it to landscape. To take photos in landscape orientation, you would need to physically turn the iPad. We also offer a square and circle. The default filter is Electra. You can choose any one of these options as well. And we also have editing tools you can turn on if you want people to choose their own filter. Here you can add margins around the photo. So if you wanna give it a little frame, you can round off the corners of those margins. Really all depends on the look that you're going for. Here you can upload a logo that would be inserted around the photo. So right now the logo position is at the bottom. You can also move it to middle side, and then you can also move it to the top as well. 
an overlay would be inserted on top of the photo. So you would need to make sure that you removed the background and then downloaded it as a transparent file. You can show the overlay during capture. Keep in mind that the overlay and the photo itself would be mirrored. Um, so if you think that will throw people off, you can just maybe skip that. With the margin background, you can upload a graphic to fill in the margins. So I have a gradient here as an example. You can also do a solid color using this section here. So if you maybe wanted to go with black or any other color, then that will do the same thing and fill in those margins. So there are a lot of different ways that you can go with this section. I do recommend just having that design guide open as you're going through. It will help so much with those graphics. All right, here you can choose the color of the app as people are using it. So I'm just gonna go with black and white text. We have two color scheme options, light or dark. With camera and countdown, it will default to these settings. So the front facing camera of the iPad, showing the get ready prompt on the screen. Countdown seconds appear on the screen and you can set up a delay. Here are those editing tools that you can turn on or off. So for available tools, people can change up the margin color, change the layout after the fact, apply a different crop, add digital props using facial detection, shuffle around the order of photos, apply a different GIF speed, add stickers or apply filters. Props and filters are probably two of the most popular ones. Here you can browse all of the packs that we have. And with filters, you can choose the ones available by coming in here and you can turn them off by moving it over to this side. These are all the different send options for how people will receive their photos. So you can set it up via email, text message, QR code. We also have a print option and an auto print. So if you turn on the print button, the print design section will show up and then you can come in and format your prints here. We have a ton of information in our help center about how to do that. We have some additional save options here. All the photos taken with the app will be stored in your Simple Booth account, your online galleries, but you can save to the camera roll as well. Uh, I do recommend clearing those photos off as soon as you can so that you don't fill up the storage space in the iPad. All right, that is everything in the preset section. I'm gonna hop back over here. There is an actions drop down here by the preset I just created where I can copy archive or delete a preset. So after an event has passed, I do recommend archiving that. It will ensure that things stay a little more cleaned up whenever you're launching the app on the iPad. Copy is another great feature. This can be a huge time saver. Let's hop over to galleries here. So you have the same actions drop down here with the addition of view so that you can view your gallery after the event. Here you can set up your default gallery privacy settings. If I click on the gallery, it takes me back into the settings. Here I can add a description of the gallery. So I'll do simple booth light software onboarding session. Live feed allows you to project photos in real time at your event. This is a great way to increase booth engagement. So you would open this up using the browser on a smart TV or a laptop that's connected to some kind of screen or projector. And then as people took photos, they would show up in the live feed. Keep in mind, it would only be photos where someone agreed to their photo being viewable in the gallery itself. All right, that's everything in the gallery section. So now we can view what the gallery looks like. So this is what it looks like currently. You've got your gallery name here. This is a link to the public profile. This is a way to start another live feed session. You can promote a single gallery using this HTML code. And if you click edit, it will take you right back into the web dashboard to make any changes that you need to. 
So that is everything in the web dashboard for the light software plan. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that you have some other quick links here, including email support and our help center. Our help center has a search bar, which is great because then you can search for a specific feature and it will pull up all of the most relevant articles. All right, that is everything that I have to share with you all today. So if you have any other questions, please let us know. And I hope that your events are great. Thanks.